Hi, my name is Andra Bonnet, and I'm the flute professor at the University of South Alabama. Here you'll have a performance of this exercise and then some tips on how to make it better for yourself. Enjoy. Alright, now that you've heard my performance of this piece, you probably have a lot of questions because the way I played it is not necessarily what it looks like on your page. So here are some tips to get you playing your best on this exercise and basically some justifications for why I did what I did. It seems like every year one of the flute exercises just drives me crazy that it was selected and this year it's this one. Um, the tempo marking the state wants you to play, which I think is quarter note 96 to 100, is just insanely too fast to be musical. You can see I wrote on my music quarter note equals 85, and that was sort of my baseline metronome tempo. Sometimes I went a little slower, sometimes I went a little faster, depending on the musical demands of the piece. But I came up with that marking because I went onto YouTube and listened to a bunch of violinists play this. I highly recommend that. Um, it's lovely playing teaches you a lot about the piece, and um, I tapped my metronome and pretty much came up with 85 as the tempo average for that. So, it is a violin piece. There is nowhere to breathe, which makes it really not great to play on the flute. So you have to create your own breathing opportunities. And in order to make them work, musically, you kind of have to ease into them and ease out of them, which of course means you're not playing strictly in tempo with a metronome all the time that's okay just um so you know that um i approach this piece the same way i would approach the first movement to box um, solo partita for flute which he wrote in the key of a minor and it's basically the first movement's all 16th notes and so again just like with this you have to create opportunities to breathe and make the musical so i've played that piece a lot and i'm very used to it so i just transferred sort of what i thought about that to this um, so the tempo is a bit flexibility, a bit flexible. Um, if the judges don't like it, sorry, at least it doesn't affect me because I'm not trying out for Allstate. But I also didn't want to put something up on the internet that was less than my best musical thoughts about this piece. So anyway, I wanted to be happy with how I played it. So there it is. So basically I've divided this into essentially two bar phrases. And normally I don't breathe on the bar lines. I usually think that's kind of my last resort, but I did in this case because at the beginning, because you have these dynamic contrasts, forte, piano, forte, piano, forte, piano, and then forte, piano. So I tried to separate those bits out and kind of play with them a little bit. Once we get to here, you can see all the rest of my breaths are after a downbeat kind of note, either on the beat three or beat four, some strong beat. Um, I tried to place my breath marks to keep like figures together. So for example, from here to here, you can see, oh, you've got this pattern ends on F sharp, same pattern ends on E, similar pattern ends on D, similar pattern ends on C sharp. Great, those are all together and then the pattern changes. So I think they make sense musically. 
Um, it's, again, I worked really hard to find these. I changed them a lot. Um, you may find ones that work better for you than what I did. That's totally your option as far as you're playing it. Um, make sure you're just attentive to the big intervals when they happen. Something like this, where you have to slur more than not to make sure the low notes are really coming out as low as you would like them to. Um, keep your articulation overall pretty gentle, like you were bowing a violin, not bouncing it, but just, you know, very legato kind of articulation. So think of a D for your tonguing instead of a T. Um, that helps a lot. I will totally admit I broke some slurs to breathe here and here and here and here. I feel like the way the figures are presented, it justifies itself. And I will argue vehemently with anyone who denies my right to do such a thing, because this is again, a violin piece and we gotta do what we gotta do to make it work on the flute. Um, one last thing, um, in bar 18, you've got this grace note here on the low E. That actually would be, the violinist was playing this, the lower, a lower string used as a chord tone. So I think it can be quite emphasized, nice, fat grace note and then when you do the trill on the b and it is a b because it's natural here so it's still a b you're going to actually want to start that on the upper auxiliary or on the c and then trill the b because that's what the bro would have done you can definitely hear that in my performance so best of luck with this this one to me was the most frustrating one to practice and to present to you guys and um not knowing who's going to be judging you when you get into the audition situation. They may love what you do. They may hate what you do. But I would I ask any of them playing any other thing to try to play this on, an, on a wind instrument because it really isn't intended for that at all. It's a violin piece. So again, if I have to be snarky about one, this is totally my one to be snarky about. But in the meantime, do the best you can. Enjoy it. If you really like playing this, my gosh, check out the Bach. Um, unaccompanied partita for flute alone. It's a beautiful piece. I've played it my entire life and I started on it when I was in high school. So um, it's a great piece and you would enjoy it. And this is kind of like a gateway to that. At any rate, best of luck on your audition. I really appreciate you taking time to watch and listen to this video. I certainly hope it helps. If you need to contact me, you can do it through the University of South Alabama Department of Music you can email me at abonet, A-B-O-H-N-E-T, at southalabama.edu. Have fun practicing these.